Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode where today we are going to be heavily converting the Iron Cordon, the vehicle we stole in the previous video from the Onyx Watch, which honestly, originally, I wasn't the biggest fan of. Of all the Onyx Watch vehicles, this one was somewhere near the bottom because I absolutely love almost all their vehicles, so even then, I still liked it, just not as much as the others, but now I've been taking a proper look at it, I... I think I have changed my mind completely. I absolutely adore this thing. It is just so delightfully castle-like. A lot of the Onyx Watch stuff is very castle-like, but this one is just so happily chunky about it, and I really, really like that. So, what exactly are we going to be doing with this to make it more unique to our fleet, and to at least do enough stuff that I will be happy using it in my fleet, and it won't just be a stolen design, full stop? Well, we're going to be making it a lot cheaper. Potentially a bit worse, but even more specialised. This thing is going to be an Onyx Watch killer. So by that, I mean I'm going to be hollowing this thing almost completely out. The turrets on the top are going to be completely removed, since we're not going to be using missiles on this thing at all. We are going to be using mortars, and lots of them, because look at all this space for explosives. And then we are likely to use perhaps just one, maybe two advanced cannons, which will be focused on armor penetration. Maybe we'll use heat or hesh, depending on if we can get the size for it. If not, it's going to be a medium speed speed firing decent gauge advanced cannon which will just be pure kinetic shells because I've grown to absolutely love them even if they're not always the best in every single circumstance but the point is lots of very slow shots with some advanced cannon backup loads of heavy hitting shells we are however going to be removing all of the missiles we're going to be removing all of the laser systems and we're going to be completely converting the engines because we will not need that much strength once all the laser systems are gone. Although the enemy are going to be using a lot of cram cannons and stuff like that, I just don't feel like the investment is going to be worth it, especially if we have multiple of these because this engine costs a lot to run and all of these laser systems cost a lot of engine power because of that so instead we can have a, a much smaller engine just focus on the speed of this thing and completely strip out all of these components like i say it's going to be a lot cheaper but it's probably going to be a bit more vulnerable but at about half the cost focusing more on just pure armor because there is a lot of free space in this thing like just an insane amount of it so imagine if all this is all armored up we can definitely survive a lot of shots, and because we're using mortars, we can bury them in the armor very effectively, so being hit one or two times probably won't take out the vehicle. It's going to be purely for... explosives. A little while later, and here we are, we have a version with none of the weapons and none of the laser defenses. This thing costs less than one third of the original. Now my goal is to have it cost about a half, give or take a little bit. And I think that's still going to be possible. Now bear in mind as well, the original was very, very expensive to keep running. The laser systems, the engines, and the sheer amount of ammo that those missiles took up was kind of insane. If we go back to the original, we fire all the weapons. So right now we have 438,000 ammo. We fire everything. So one full attack from everything. There we are. Now we'll stop. Let it very slowly reload. How much that does cost us for one attack? It does take a long time for these things to reload. So just shy then of 25,000 for that one attack set. So when you create ammo, an ammo processor, you get 7.5 ammo per 0.5, so essentially 15 ammo per one material. That is still a lot of material per attack. So if we would say that that was 24k ammo, that would be 1,600 materials if we replenished all the ammo only using the ammunition processors. If we were to place them down, the ammo barrels to replace it, then obviously be far more expensive. That's a lot of materials per attack. Not as much as I first thought, though. Gotta be perfectly honest, that was not as much as I first thought. But it is still very expensive, especially considering how expensive the missiles are themselves. Large missiles are incredibly expensive. See, later on, this will all be fine. Honestly, it's not that bad, but where we are in the game right now, I just can't field these. 
large missiles versus the anti-munition system of the Iron Cordon. Essentially fighting itself here, just with these weapons turned off. Wow, that did not stop a single missile. Wow. Though those missiles are absolutely deadly. Didn't stop that cram either, but to be fair, it has already pretty much opened up. I just want to see if the munition systems will be worth it. I think they'd have to be beefed up to really fight against stuff that we're going to be seeing. Though they are still pretty good versus cram shells. We're going to see so many of those. I just don't think it's worth it for this, just because we have so much space for armoring things up. Yeah, I think I will stick to no laser system for now. Don't worry, in future builds I'll definitely be adding them, just right now. Cost. I also want this to be a Nurgle-themed ship, which means lots of green, lots of heavy armor everywhere, lots of protections like that, but just not many lasery, shiny things. Okay, let's get to work now, actually adding the weapons. The first thing we need to remove is all this ammo here. So I'll have the mortars in the center. We could have four large miss sorry, large mortars here, and then have all the internals kind of spread out. That'd be really easy to protect. Then we could have some smaller ones, or perhaps a normal cram cannon at the front. Actually, yeah, that's what I want. I want a normal cram cannon at the front, which will be a turret going into the hull, then heavy mortars in the core, and then probably a smaller backup weapon at the back, depending on how much money we have left at the end. Okay. Let's make some progress. Okay, so these engines will have to be moved. I really need to start building these radiators. I never build a radiator. So I've changed my mind about something. So rather than just do this by accident later, I've decided I'm going to give myself the same... Ooh, that looks way better than I expected. The same budget as the original Iron Cordon. So we have loads and loads of money to play with, because remember, we just stole one of these things, and outside of the mainframes, it's pretty much undamaged, so we can easily convert it without any excess materials being poured into it. That looks like a really, really aggressive birthday cake. The best kind of birthday is the one covered in explosive fragments. Now, the problem of using mortars is that they will be able to be taken down by things like the laser munition system. So the question is, can you just brute force it? Yes, you can! And they missed. Why did you miss? You're on the auto detection system. I think. Wait, did I turn that off? Because if I turn that off, currently my craft is blind. Okay, stage one. I have blinded my own craft. Clearly, this retrofit is going... Yep, yeah, I have clearly blinded my own craft. Okay, this time with a bit less blind. Ooh, confetti. But after that first attack, they will stagger, and that managed to hit nothing vital. Actually, that's something really interesting with the Iron Cordon. There's not many places where I would say, you hit this place, the thing dies. It's very spread out, and there's no massively vital areas. Either way, what these shells are is armor penetration and fragments. They go inside something, they detonate, little fragments hit everything. The important thing is it hits something vital, but... Like that, for instance! <laughs> oh! Lovely! Because it doesn't do as, as much damage to the armor as the other types do, at least seemingly in the tests I've ran. But it pretty much guarantees it just shreds a room if it gets in there, so if there's anything vital, it's gonna be hit. So the Iron Cordon is actually pretty good against this, but yep, yeah, that's pretty much done the job now. The insides are made of confe confetti, rather, and the enemy is dead. Oh, we're already actually dead dead. So it must have taken out both of the AIs. Lovely. Or did that say too damaged? Really? So yeah, I like those crams. The first set of weapons is pretty much good to go. Just needs a few tweaks here and there. So next up then, what do we do with the front? We could be stupid, which is my favourite thing to do, and just add more mortars. Because I love mortars. But I really do think a faster firing shell just directly at the target should go at the front. It'll help to drain the energy of things like the Iron Cordon, and it will give the whole thing an advantage being able to hit somewhat early. Because right now, its main weakness is it's going to take so long for those shells to hit. 
it's gonna take damage from fights. Actually, I think I know the perfect weapon. The Cram Battleship! The reason why I'm thinking this thing will probably have weapons which will suit it quite well is because these crams at the front were okay and actually very small. Which means they can definitely fit here and we can super armor it up. Oh wow, yeah, we can super up. How much space does this have? The Iron Cordon is like 80% space. So, originally, that was the missile turret on here, which actually went on the outside. What was in here before I started stripping it? Oh, yeah, there is plenty of... Okay, uh, second thought, I think I might just build a brand new cram cannon from scratch, because we have loads of space. Though, this room's fairly neat. No, I think, yeah, break this open, move the AI a bit further back, that way we can have all of that for a cram cannon, that'll be really nasty. I like cram cannons. Okay, so I just spent the last two or so hours sorting out all the armor on the inside of the craft. I've added a brand new cram cannon to the front. This is just pure explosive. It's 2,000 millimeter and actually a decent cram cannon. I'm definitely getting better at building these with the Tetris. There's two little baby cram cannons on the side because I had space and I like little baby cram cannons because they explode. And then, of course, we have the mortars all now set up in their final form, still using their frag armor penetration shells. Not sure if I like them, honestly. I know they're effective, but they don't explode. There's no explodey. I mean, that's just so much less fun, so we're probably gonna still use them. They're green, they fit the whole theme, and as you can see, I've also done the paint scheme now. But yeah, definitely prefer explosive. So we're currently at 220,000 resource. There's armor pretty much everywhere now, so the only thing we need to do is sort out a new engine and sort out whatever's going to go on the back of here. And honestly, I have no idea. Just underneath all this wooden armor, all, especially all around here, there are several layers of metal as well, so it's no longer just one layer thick of wood like it was before. So for volume, I think we are going to be bigger than the original, but for cost, we're going to be less and definitely far less to just run this thing because the other one just costs so much to run, I couldn't really use it. So what am I going to put on the back? Originally I wanted an advanced cannon, just a armor penetration gun, that way with all the enemies using so much um, anti-munition laser systems, lambs, I just need something else. I am realizing how stupid it is to make an Onyx Watch Hunter, which uses only cram cannons, now that the Onyx Watch uses so much munition defense. They are so good versus cram cannons. So it's a bit of a bad time there. But still, I think it's going to turn out okay. It's certainly going to be able to take a few hits and draw the attention of the enemy. And I think I've done a good job making it look all nurgly, which makes me happy inside. Just like a good plague. Going to do a quick test versus the trebuchet. Currently we can't move, and yeah, look at that. All of those shells would have stopped. This is more about how we can survive, and hopefully the brute force of all the mortars will break through the munition systems. Okay, let's see if they all hit at the same time, that'd be great. Oh, it looks like we've drained most of the power, and then here comes all the mortars. Goodbye to uh, both of the main guns, goodbye. Carved through the metal, then the fragments detonated everything. They still have their munition defense, but I think, yeah, we are going to be the victors here. We've only lost one of our small cannons. Wow, the trebuchet costs way more than us. Yep, that worked. <laughs> it worked. I always thought it would. I had confidence in that. Wow, we took very little damage. Oh, I love cram cannons. Loud explosions. Slow. Explodey explosions. My brain just went dead then. Slow explodey explosions? Oh, I wanted to say slow shells, which are easy to track, but explodey explosions. What? <laughs> Oh, I need sleep! Now, this next plan takes a bit of explaining and is very hard to understand, so try and keep up. My genius now is really at a level which is very difficult for people to understand, apparently. So the enemy are using things which are good versus cram cannon shells, especially explosive ones. So what if... we use more cram cannon shells? Especially explosive ones. So basically what I'm trying to say is we should finally use up this section here, armor it up, and I'm going to add one more cram cannon similar to one at the front, but rather than having four, it's just going to have two cram cannons. This will increase the alpha strike and hopefully either drain all the power of the enemy, since it seems like, 
I think pretty much every enemy I've tested out so far in Yonix Watch doesn't have a consistent munition defense. You can siphon all of its power if you have enough shells and it's constantly on for a short while. So if we just have a few more shells, it's gonna really, really tamper with that. And what we could do, now I've said explosive, but we could even use some EMP, but that would be against the theme. You know what, I might just add more frag shells for fun. We really do not have all that much space here, do we? No. Uh, yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be... Oh, nope. Can't even go underneath there. That's still plenty space for two cram cannons on a turret. Is it? Yes, it is. But I have to be careful with how I build it, and I have to be really careful with how I do the armor. So I'm actually going to do the armor first this time. This just looks like either a mortar setup or just a missile silo so much. I mean, we could use anti-missile missiles either as a distraction for any missiles, especially since the enemy seem to love to make the iron cordons, or just missiles which hit missiles in the face, thus destroying both missiles in the missile -y process. But no, we're going to have more cram cannons. I don't know why, but this is my mission today. This is my goal in life. This is the will of the Plague Father. All glory to the Grandfather of Plague. This can only go well. Because we can't even move yet. I didn't even see those cram shells. <laughs> they were destroyed before they even got onto screen. That's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's... Yep, that, that totally overwhelmed their defences. Yep, there goes one of my cannons. <laughs> Okay, good. That's actually pretty good timing because the mortars are about to land. Please hit something useful, you two. Neither of you did what I wanted you to do. That's, um, yep. I mean, yep, sorry, we did survive their first attack. It's just, yeah, the only few unarmored sections left were damaged. Oh, I should not be repairing right now. Whoopsie doodle. That's now off. No, it's not. Now it's up. No, I can't press buttons. What is wrong with me? Who am I? What am I? What is like? I pressed F7 before. Why did it work that time? Sure. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. And that's one of the smaller mortars, I think. That was one of the larger ones that would have done some good internal damage, except for the iron cord, and this is a hollow ball of anger. I feel you, iron cord. I too feel like a hollow ball of anger once in a while. Oh wow, we are just completely devastating in terms of health. Yeah, the missiles are just nowhere near as strong as they were in previous tests. Now I've actually got some layered armor together. They're just not breaking through the outer layers. Whereas we have broken the side and just fragmented all over the place. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. But yeah, there we go. Once again, just look at all that. It looks like nothing is happening, but things are just being shredded. I like the word shredded today. Victory! Sweet, sweet, clumsy victory. Let that be a lesson to you, kids. Incompetence is fine if you have enough of it. Overwhelm them with incompetence. They can't stop you if you are incompetent enough with enough determination. That's how I got everywhere in life. That's how I got my degrees. Sheer, unrelenting incompetence. Oh yeah, I don't have an engine yet, do I? So I can't balance myself. Oh, also my throat's dying, which is great. Wow, yeah, but you can see how well the armor's held up. Um, only one of the mortars has been exposed. No, actually, no, it's not in the mortar. Yeah, the armor did great. Oh, it got through. No, it didn't. Yes. Did any of the major gun- yeah, this gun here, which I don't think I've armoured up the top properly yet, which you can probably see. You can see the layers on the side, but not on top, so I need to do more on top there. It looks really cool right now, I've got to be honest. Okay, I'm going to set up the engine, then I'm going to call it a day before my sanity completely slips into the void. So I was taking a look at the prefabs, and apparently this is allowed now. You know, that doesn't look right to me, gotta be honest. 
Seems a little bit off. Almost like they're floating in midair. Have I update them? There we go. Okay, so if you update them, they suddenly break again. <laughs> well, that's curious. That is very curious indeed. Okay. Just going to make myself a couple of small steam engines, I think. Just regular engines. Got a bit of space down here, so just armor up the back section there, put them in. Then I think everything should be good to go. I still have the original AI as well. One of them's been moved and basically replicated. So it should still have all the self-balancing. But if it's not quite as smooth as I like, because I like the ships to be almost completely still in the water, even though that's a bit weird, I will just change the PID myself. Okay, there we are. We have three steam engines. They're not currently on max, and that's just about enough and not quite enough. Well, we can max that later. That's a very easy balancing issue. Same with the PID. I've just tweaked them slightly. We're still a bit bouncy, but that's fine. We do have a lot of space here if I want to do anything there. It currently looks like a very angry face. So I can still do more to this if anyone has any suggestions. I am still going to be avoiding using EMP with this because it's just out of theme. I want to have... Uh, at least one vehicle for each of the gods. So we have Zinch, Lanesh, Korn, Nurgle. This is Nurgle. We already have the Korn designs, since that's kind of all I've been doing normally. So this is this out of the way. So slow, heavy duty, heavy armor. That's kind of the theme here. Also, I suppose I really should have explained at the start of the video, Nurgle's the god of plague and decay and is generally represented by very slow, very tanky things which are hard to kill or just come back to life because zombies. So I thought this kind of fit the theme. Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I have really enjoyed recording it. I was originally only going to sit down for an hour just to start off this video and I've ended up recording for way too long. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favorite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching. In the next episode, I will be determined to spawn this into the campaign itself so that we can send it against the Onyx Watch. Also, I think I need some marks of Nurgle, just like decals all over this thing. Because that would be cool too. Since the Screamer, the Flyer, actually has the marks of Zinch, this needs the marks of Nurgle. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye. See? Decals of Zinch. That is all. Bye again.